Wittgenstein is anxious to insist in the investigations that language is indefinitely extendable and that there isn't any single thing that binds all uses of language together, that there isn't any single essence that runs through all of language. And indeed, for particular words, there needn't be any particular essence that marks the definition of that word, that he says words have a, a, a family resemblance of their uses so that, I mean, he gives the example of game. He says, if you ask yourself, what is it that all games have in common? And he, he keeps insisting, don't think what they all have in common, but look and see if you can find anything. And then he says, if you consider board games, Olympic games, gambling games, uh, games played with uh, balls on fields and so on, what you find is that there isn't any single essence. There isn't any single thing that all games have in common. The strength of uh, the words derives not from some underlying essence, but from the fact that they, uh, there's a series of crisscrossing relationships, similarities, and he compares that to the way that the various members of a family resemble each other. And he calls this a family resemblance relation. Remember, he is militating against a very powerful philosophical tradition. He's militating first against the idea idea of his own, that words get their meanings by standing for objects. And then secondly, an even older tradition that says words get their meanings by being associated with ideas in the head. And he's militating against a tradition that says, and this goes back to Plato, that in order for a word to have a meaning, there must be some essence, there must be some essential trait that the word marks. So the interest of his um, remarks about language derives a lot from their a revolutionary or radical attack on a pre-existing tradition. He's, he uses the term family resemblance so often that I think it's worth saying just uh, a word or two about that. Uh, when we talk of a family, the mem different members of a family having uh, a marked family resemblance to each other, it need not be the case that there's one single feature that they all have in common. It need not be the case that they all have the same nose or all have the same chin. But th that there's no single feature that they all have in common, just an overlapping and crisscrossing uh, a, a, a set of, of features from which they all draw, as it were. Now, Wittgenstein is saying that this is true <coughs> of language and meaning, that if we look at a term or a word, it's a great mistake to look for the one thing that it means, because there is no one thing that it means. The meaning of a word is like family resemblance in that case. Uh, namely, a word has several different meanings, like the several different members of a family. There may be a crisscrossing and overlapping set of relationships between those different meanings, but there's no one thing that the meanings all have in common, which is, as it were, the essence of that word. Mm -hmm. That's, re that's, that, that, that's right. That's yeah. what he's saying. Now, he yeah. doesn't say that this is true for every word in the language. No doubt no. there are words that have strict mm. definitions, but he mm. thought that this was crucial for philosophers to see because a lot of the words that trouble us, especially in philosophy, I mean, in ethics and aesthetics, words like good and beautiful, uh, which he was very mm. suspicious of mm. these words, but he thought that our uh, part of our failure was we were looking for some essence of beauty or essence of goodness, whereas he insists just look at the various resembling crisscrossing similarities in the use of these words.